And good morning. Welcome back to JPCE Spiritual Talk. It's Chair Campbell. So this morning's devotional, A Jealous God, and a small reading from Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 24. And I have a little bit of some closeout work at the end of the devotional. We'll look at some things in the Bible. Before we get into all of that, we're going to open up the opening prayer because we're going to ask the Lord, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because we're going to ask the Lord to shine our hearts, O loving Master, the pure light of your divine hallow, and open the eyes of our mind that we may understand your teachings in Scripture. Help us to apply what we learn so that you're having conquerable desires. We may pursue a spiritual way of life. Thank you for doing all things that are pleasing to you. For you, Christ, your God, you are light. And to you we give glory, and Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Sages. Amen. The Lord is our shepherd. All right, good morning. Welcome back. So great is his faithfulness. Indeed, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. All right, so welcome back. So this morning's devotional, A Jealous God. It's a small reading from Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 24. So I went in, I took a picture of it again so everybody can follow along the devotional. Thank you all again for following. It's my pleasure to serve you all. The true definition of minister is to serve someone else's will. It's my calling to bring God's word to you all each and every day. All right, so here we go. Here's our devotional. Let's zoom in. All right, get me out of the way here. So a jealous God. So a small reading from Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 24, name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. Our God is, our God is a consuming fire. He is satisfied only when his love totally consumes us. We usually think of a jealous person as someone resentful and suspicious, but the Lord's jealousy on our behalf is something that should be precious to us. He has the complete right to our lives. He gave us life, and he wants to protect us from anything that could harm us. That is why he has commanded his children to worship no other gods, allowing nothing to distract us from his consuming love. The Lord opposes anything that hinders our relationship with him. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 15. He knows the danger of other gods, how they will lure us away, deceive us, and leave us empty. He will tolerate nothing that takes presence over our love for him. Our faithfulness to God assures us of the abundant life he wants to give us. If we reject him, he will pursue us until we return to him. We should not resent the fact that God wants to guard our relationship with him. It should bring us comfort. Our relationship with God should be our top priority. It should dictate how we spend our time, our money, and our energy. If certain people, if certain people or our possession separates from God. We must re-examine our hearts and give our devotion first to him. As he commands, God wants each of us to love him with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Mark chapter 12, verse 30. Our love for God should extend to every corner of our lives. God loved us so much that he gave us his own son. Let us respond by giving him our highest devotion and return. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, the sages. Amen. Another beautiful reading, another beautiful reflection, and it's so spot on. Let's take a look at some things. All right, so what do we have before us? So Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 24. So let's zoom in on that right there. I highlighted that. So it says, for the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. Let's look at some of the notes. Let me zoom in on these notes. So right there, it says one meaning of the name God is burning. Thus, he is called a consuming fire. I right? can also look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29. And he burns up sin and corruption in the repentant. He cleanses them with his purifying fire. St. Anesius the Great. He also gives them his water of life which quenches their thirst that once burned with sins, but now yearns for him and his kingdom, St. Ambrose in Milan. Mm. 
Mark chapter 12. So let's start right there in verse 28, and I'm going to go to verse 31. Let's zoom in on that. So right there, starting at verse 28, the greatest commandment came the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The one of the scribes came, having heard them reasoning together, perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandment is here, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. Hmm. Somebody else said that, and we'll get to that in a second. So the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. So as we zoom in on these notes, we start right there. It says, in his response to one of the scribes, Jesus is quoting what? Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 and 5. The greatest Jewish confession of faith called Shema, meaning here, the first word of the confession. In verse 31, he quotes Le Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18, combining what is already present, what in the Old Testament, to create a new understanding, love of neighbor. Let me open up my Bible real quick. Let's finish up reading. Let's see what that says. It's hard to see with the way the pages are. So Mark. All right, so in his response to one of the scribes, Jesus quotes, right? Deuteronomy chapter 6. Verse four and five, it's talking about the greatest commandment, the Jewish confession of faith called Shema, meaning here, the first word of the confession. And verse 31, in verse 31, Jesus quotes Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18, combining what is already present in the Old Testament to create a new understanding. Love of neighbor is an expression of love of God, right? Before we close out, we're going to look right here. So here's Deuteronomy, chapter 6, the great commandment, verses 4 and 5, right? So we're going to zoom in, we're going to read that, and then we're going to get ready to close out. There's something in here that matches what we just read in Mark. So if we zoom in, it says, these are the ordinance and the judgments the Lord commanded the children of Israel in the desert. When they came from the land of Egypt, hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, is one Lord. One Lord. Go back to Mark. What did Jesus say? Zoom in. It says, hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. <laughs> so the Lord is one. The Lord is one, right? The undivided trinity. Right? So the Lord is one. Even Moses said the Lord is one. Jesus said it too. You shall love the Lord your God from your whole heart, from your whole soul, and from your whole power and your strength. Let's look at the notes, and then we're going to close out. So by Moses saying one Lord, we understand the simple, right, blessed, and incomprehensible essence of God. St. Aeneas the Great. Moses is not saying the one Lord is one solitary person, Hillary Pietiers. Rather, he is saying. He has one undivided essence or nature. For person and nature are not the same thing. St. John, Damascus. The divine nature exists undividedly in three distinct persons. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Son is begotten before all ages from the essence of the Father, but his begetting does not divide the Father's essence. The Holy Spirit proceeds before all time and ages from the Father, but his procession does not divide the Father's essence. The persons are distinct distinct or different, but the essence is one and undivided. Therefore, we believe in the Holy Trinity, our one God and Lord, in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So beautiful. This is where we're going to end. This morning's devotional. So love him with everything you have. 
be just like the thief on the cross we acknowledge him right just like the thief on the cross we acknowledge him love him with everything you have right see we go back right right here to mark the greatest commandment jesus simplified right when he was asked he simplified it all right he said first of all the commandment is is hero israel the lord our god the lord is one and you shall love the Lord our God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Oh, man, it's beautiful, man. It's so beautiful. We are to pursue God with all we have, to love him with everything we have. And we are to give the same love to all of our neighbors. Who is our neighbor? Everybody's our neighbor. Even the person who wrongs you is your neighbor. Just because somebody wrongs you. What did Jesus say? Respond in love, right? Respond in love. We are children of God. And children of God do not inflict violence. No. We respond in love, mercy, compassion, humility, forgiveness, repentance, agape, love. This is where we'll end this morning's devotional. Thank you all so much for following. Surely it means a lot. Thank you all again for following. Chair Wesley Campbell, thank you all so much. I'm going to close out in prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord God, you've spoken us your divine saving words. Oh, Lord God, you've spoken us your divine saving words. You illuminate the souls of sinners and comprehend what we just read. That we don't appear simply as hear spiritual words, but doers of good deeds, true pursuers of faith. Having to blame his life and conduct without approaching Christ our Lord. And you are alive to you with your glory. Father, Son. The Holy Spirit, now and forever, the sages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily prayer, forgive us our trespasses. Forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil one. But yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory of the Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, the sages. Amen. The Lord is our shepherd. We depart in peace. In the name of the Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Peace be with you all, go in peace. Shalom, shalom. May the Lord forgive those who love us and those who hate us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be merciful to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Sages. Amen. Chair Wesley Campbell, good morning, good day. Whenever and however these messages, these devotionals, all these studies find you all. Love you all so much. And JPCE Spiritual Talk, never, ever hold back. Right? Seek truth. You seek your father in heaven. Give him your heart. He does the rest. Remember, our Lord is one Lord, right? In three essence, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Trinity. Even Moses said it himself, our Lord is one Lord. The word is true, and the word lives on. Thank you all so much. Love you all so much.